trillions of bacteria, viruses, and fungi live on or inside of us, and maintaining a good, balanced relationship with them is to our advantage. Together, they form the gut microbiome, a rich ecosystem that performs a variety of functions in our bodies. The bacteria in our guts can break down food the body can't digest, produce important nutrients, regulate the immune system, and protect against harmful germs. How many of you guys know who Hippocrates is? Have you all heard of him? He's an awesome guy, right? 3,000 years ago, he said, all disease begins in the gut. And now that's an idea that time has come back. It's come around. And so as a clinician, I always look at gut health first, no matter what. If our guts aren't functioning, if our digestive system isn't functioning well, nothing else will. Well, I'm here to talk to you about what I think is the most important organ, and that is the gut microbiome. So for those of you who don't know what the gut microbiome is, it's everything from your mouth to your colon, from entry to exit, all the bits in between. So your stomach, your small intestine, your large intestine, and all of the little critters that live in there. So bacteria, fungi, viruses, and cells. There are trillions of these little critters that are living in there. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but diversity is so important in the gut. And then, all of a sudden, I started hearing about the good bugs. And I go, what's that? And as we begin to look at the actual genetics, this was the breakthrough that allowed us to actually understand our microbiome. Microbes we acquire or do not acquire affect our likelihood of developing diseases like obesity, diabetes, and even some cancers. Now, microbes are also really important in the field of medicine. So, for example, what microbes you have in your gut uh, determine whether particular painkillers are toxic to your liver. They also determine whether or not other drugs will work for your heart condition. As our bodies have been adapting to life in modern society, we're losing some of our normal microbes. And at the same time, there are quite a few diseases related to the gut that are skyrocketing in developed nations all around the world. So why is it important to have a healthy gut? Well, it's really important for long-term health. So if you have a healthy gut, you're going to feel more energetic. You're going to get sick less often. You're going to have better mental clarity and ultimately have better emotional well-being. Versus if you don't have a healthy gut, a lot of research is showing that this is related to things like autoimmune conditions, diabetes, neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's, and even emotional issues like anxiety and depression. So microbes are performing a huge range of functions. They help us digest our food, uh, they help educate our immune system, they help us resist disease, and they may even be affecting our behavior. Our health is severely influenced by many other factors like our lifestyle, our diet, and our fellow microbes. 100 trillion cells, one and 14 zeros, that's the approximate number of microorganisms in your body. 10 times greater than the number of your own cells. Your microbial baggage occupies almost 2% of your body weight. That's about one and a half kilos. Approximately the weight of your liver or your brain, and all these are microbes. Just think about it for a second. Human microbiome, that's the modern term for all microbial communities inhabiting your body, has earned a close attention over the last decade. It seems that we are only beginning to discover the mysterious role that is given to microbes in the performance of our health. Our, our biome describes 90% of all the cells. We're only 10%. Really, we are, more, we are more microbial than we are human. So we have 10 times the amount of microbial cells than we have human cells. So that stands to reason that we are bacteria learning how to be human. It has been already shown in several studies that gut microbiota composition is associated to weight, as well as the likelihood of developing diseases like diabetes or cardiovascular diseases. Like most of life, it's about a balance. And when they do not get, are not balanced, we call it a dysbiosis. When that begins to happen, we find that it starts causing diseases. 
You know the word irritable bowel syndrome. Some of you may actually have it. You know, diarrhea, constipation, abdominal cramps, all these kind of things. You know about colitis. You've heard of people that have colitis. These kinds of things are when there is a dysbiosis. There's an imbalance between the good bugs and the bad bugs. So I mentioned that microbes have all these important functions, and they've also, been, they've also now, just over the past few years, been connected to a whole range of different diseases, uh, including inflammatory bowel disease, uh, heart disease, colon cancer, and even obesity. Obesity has a really large effect, as it turns out, and today we can tell whether you're lean or obese with 90% accuracy by looking at the microbes in your gut. So that's amazing, right? What it means is that the three pounds of microbes that you carry around with you may be more important for some health conditions than every single gene in your genome. So what are some simple things that you can do to help improve your gut? Well, one, we've talked about changing your diet. In one recent microbiome study, scientists found that fruits, vegetables, tea, coffee, red wine, and dark chocolate were correlated with increased bacterial diversity. These foods contain polyphenols, which are naturally occurring antioxidant compounds. And then lastly, targeted supplementation. I'm not saying to take lots of different supplements. I'm saying if there's certain things that your body needs, you might actually take a supplement. So the next time that you're lying on the couch, feeling lethargic and not sure why, or you're sick for the fifth time in a year, listen to your gut. And if you have happy bugs, you're going to be a healthy person. Thank you very much. Thank you.